Don't, everyone say hi to your parents. Hi. <laughs> okay. This will be uploaded once I'm done. All right, vocab. Not very many vocab today. We will start with optimization. By the way, we have been doing a lot of optimization. What do you think it means? To improve. To improve. What else? To make the most efficient. To make the most efficient, right? To get the best out of things. Would you guys agree? If we're talking about cost, we want to minimize cost. If we are talking about making money, don't you want to make the most money? Heck yeah, right? So here we go. Optimization. To Hello, that's that. Is to find the max or min values based on your model. So in this unit, you will be studying about money. Um, it will talk about revenue. What's a revenue, by the way? Income just. Is it income? Yeah, it's income. But what do you what do you think you need? What's the difference between revenue and profit? Profit is actually capital expenses. That's right. Profit is actually how much you take home, right? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Uh, yeah, revenue, that means you have to take into, you still have costs in there. Does that make sense? Okay, so revenue equation, it will be given to you as R in your book equals to x times p, okay? Now x is units sold, units sold, and p is going to be price per unit. All right. So these are the two models that you will see a lot in this unit, okay? These are nonlinear data, data. This one's opening upside down. So if you look at it from algebra two trig, what shape do you think that looks like? Parabola. Yeah, so it's going to be a positive one since it opens up. So we'll do ax squared plus bx plus c. That looks like an e, but that's supposed to be a c. And then we want to also define that a is greater than zero to indicate that it's a positive parabola. This one, I'm writing actually the same exact equation, except that when I'm defining my a, I would just have to say a is less than zero. If I'm going too fast, please let me know, because I know not all of you have printed notes, and that would be really hard to copy. Uh, Kyle B, can you help me read example one, please? Part A, we'll take one part at a time. Part A, can you help me read Part A, please? Anita D. Um, find a model that expresses the revenue R as a function of the price. Perfect. Okay. So I gave you a revenue model already. And the revenue model was just simply R equals X times P. I don't want what variable in there? X. I don't want X. I just want it in terms of P. Well, do we know what X is? Yes, we do. What is x? That's right. So we are going to, I'm going to write p in the front, and then I'm going to replace 1,500 minus 30p. Yes, you may distribute, but you don't have to. You can box that up. Now, question number two is, what is the domain of your revenue equation? Oh, I wrote, I'm sorry, I wrote R of X. I'm supposed to be writing R of P. So, what's the domain of this equation? 
What does that even mean in plain English? Because if you walk around and you tell people what's the domain, they're not going to know what you're talking about in real life. So in math, we talk about domain all the time. But what does that mean? What does it mean in plain English? No, no, like in this application. Because we're using your inputs P, right? So we're looking for what P is need to be. Does that make sense? What does that mean in plain English? Like when you walk out, you go home, you're like, mom, you know? Price can't be negative. Right. Price can never ever be negative. negative. Can it be anything it wants to be? Okay, so we know for sure. P has to be can can P be zero? Can I give up free things? Yeah. For sure. So inclusive. See, sometimes if that's the difference between finance models and areas and volume. But what is the max price that you can charge? The price is okay. Yeah, but in this particular model, what? Can be infinity. How do we know what the max price is? Infinity non-inclusive. Infinity non-inclusive. Can it? $1,500. Question, another question. Revenue. Do you want revenue to be negative? No. What's the smallest revenue that you think you want? Zero. Zero, right? You want? Ah, so how'd you get it? Uh, well, I was just trying to calculate it. Um, you just have to make sure if the smallest it can be is zero. You just make sure that x is zero. Okay. Ideally, when you have a business, you don't want revenue to be in the hole, right? In the negative. So the smallest revenue, otherwise you might as well just close your door. Why would you want to be bleeding money every month? So the smallest revenue you want is zero. I am um, ideally you want positive, but the smallest is zero. Then you want to solve for price. It's already factor, so the first is zero. Then the second factor, take it and set it equal to zero and solve for P. And P came out to be 50. Okay. So that means if I charge zero dollars or fifty dollars, my revenue will be at its lowest at what? Zero. What unit price should be used to maximize our revenue? This is where you can bust out your calculator, okay? So now if this one's an easier question, so some of you already see it. How would you use your calculator for your benefit here? What, what are you graphing? What are you graphing? The equation, go ahead, y1. Graph it in. Uh, I'm going to come around and see a couple homework and help you with the calculator. I'll set two minutes on the alarm clock for you. Okay. Why don't you try your C, answer C and D for me in your team. I'm going to come around and check your answers as well as give you support. If you don't know how to use a calculator, that's when I will also be helping you.
Graphing, what's your x min? Zero, what's your x max? 50, and zoom fit, okay? Do you have, what shape do you see? A parabola. Guys, you need to have something like this, similar. It doesn't have to be identical. Okay. That means you didn't do it right. Okay. If you have a straight line, no, no, show, tell him. That way it's in his brain. Okay, where's your graphing calculator, hon? Graph your gra take out your calculator as well. Okay, who else need help with calculator? Okay, graph your, your function. I'll be right there. Or ask your team and then I'll get over there. So it's x times 1,500 minus 30 times x, right? Okay. And then if I got grab. Well, you have to do your window. Zoom fit. I, I did go to zoom fit. Right. Okay, well, I guess. It's always like that. All right, sir. It doesn't make sense. Okay. I go to my y equals. Okay. Oops. You have a fancy one. This is going to be very confusing. Y equals. May I check? Yeah. I typed it. X times. Okay. And Accept. Then I do graph. And it says name is not a function or program. And go I back to no, y equals? I have no idea what that means. Okay. Is there. Okay. Is it possible to uncheck that or is that just there all well, the time? If it's checked, that just means it's graphing. Okay, how about so you can like pick which ones you get. Do you, is there a way to clear your plot? I don't have any plots. Okay. Huh. Let me check. Let me just type in. Let me do it one more time. Well, y equals x works just fine. X times 1500 minus 30x, right? Yes. All right, hit graph for me. Name is not a function or program. But it graphs like y equals x, y equals That's x so squared. Weird. Exit that oh. out, because this is, see, I don't even know. Okay, I, I don't know. We have to figure that out later. Okay. okay. Yes, I just got through like four people. <laughs> All right. Um, so for this one, as you can see, I'm not asking you to give me a sketch of the graph, but you can use your calculator it says, what unit price should be used to maximize the revenue? So what do we do from the calculator? Find the max, okay? Then it will give you P, and P equals what? 25 bucks, okay? So to maximize revenue, price should be at 25 bucks. Now, do I need to give you the unit of measurement for P ever? 
No. Okay. If this price is charged, what is the maximum revenue? What should we answer there? What is it? 18? Okay. Maximum revenue is 18,700. And what? 50 bucks. Thank you very much. Sir? Why would an upping the unit price? Uh, increase the maximum revenue. Say that one more time. Why wouldn't upping the unit price? <gasps> oh, yeah, like good question. Let's say that you are out to sell calculators. All right, that's your okay. business. What if you're going to go to the schools and be like, hey, anybody want to buy this for $1,000? Yeah, okay. okay. Are there? There may be a couple, right? Would you guys agree? Yeah. But. Do you think people's, is, is there a certain price that people would be like, forget that, yeah. right? So that's why. There's like a maximum price that people are willing to spend their money on. Beyond that, there's gonna be always a couple, but if there's only one or two people buying your stuff, you will end up losing money. Okay. So there's always a ceiling, they call it, in pricing. Okay. Just like Hurley's. They're not gonna, well, they're not, oh, why am I giving this to you? But Hurley, it's like Hurley is what we n normally know because they sponsor a lot of our stuff, right? They're not going to come start charging their shirts like thousands and thousands of dollars. Once in a while, they would if it's like some special item, but normally it's not a normal thing. How would the calculator know that? Hmm? How would the calculator know? The calculator doesn't. You need to know. <laughs> correct, correct, okay? Guys, the equation that you write, okay, the equation that you write will normally have, the, that's why we have the domain, okay? To set what the minimum is, the maximum, anything beyond that, it was going to give you a negative revenue, okay? If you have a minimum and maximum and it's a parabola, there will always be the, the highest point. Does that make sense? Yeah. They call it ceiling. That means that's the most that it's going to be. Okay. Are there any other questions for? Uh -huh. <laughs> Some. Mm -hmm. Example dose. A farmer has 1,600 yards of fence to enclose a rectangular field. What are the dimensions of the rectangle that encloses the most area? And again, this is optimizing, okay? Okay, 1,600 yards. What do we use that for? Perimeter. That is perimeter. Perfect. So let's write that. 1,600 is perimeter. What's the formula for our perimeter if it's a rectangular field? <laughs> yeah, 2x's plus 2 W's. Perfect. But I'm not interested in the perimeter. We're looking for what? Area. The largest area. What is the area formula for a rectangle? X times W. Okay. Notice how this question does not ask you to write a model in terms of X or W, so you get to pick. What would you like to write the model in terms of? W. Sounds good area in terms of W, and it doesn't matter. Every student's going to be different. Okay. I need you to put the phone book away, please. All right, so that means you have to get rid of X. How do you get rid of X? You go back to where? W and solve for? I mean, go back to W. Go back to the perimeter and solve for? X. X, right? Because I need to fill in X. I'm sorry. All right, yeah. So first thing is I will move the two w's over, divide each and every term by two, x comes out to be 800 minus w, yay, nay, maybe? Yes. Plug it in. Distribution or no distribution? Yes. <laughs> Do will I accept both? Yes. Yes, I will. If you love distribution so much, I will take it. All right. That's the air, uh, but that's the formula, but we haven't really answered anything yet. What do you do here? Graph it. Graph it. All right, bust out your calculator. Graph it. Okay. I'm circling that so you know what you will need to put in your calculator. Yes? 
Oh, eight, oh, eight, my goodness, thank you. 800, I'm missing quite a few zeros. All right, 800. So I want you to use your calculator and answer the question. I'll just leave the blank spaces. What are the dimensions of the recto rectangle that encloses the most area? Okay. The dimensions are And then you filled it in. Blank by blank. And then I think this is yards. So I'll wait for you guys. You guys, practice using your calculator now. And as an extension, we'll do the largest area is as an extension. It doesn't ask for it, but you know largest area is. Okay, this is an extension. As you know, I will be asking for all of this on your exam, so I might as well. Okay, use your calculator, fill it in, and then compare your answer with your partner. Shoulder partner, if you don't have a shoulder partner, front partner, back partner. How would you, how would you know what your x-min should be? What's your x-min? Zero, because can a dimension be negative? No, what's your x max? Sure, try 800. Once you put in x min, x max, you should do zoom fit. Try it. First, look at the graph to see if you and your partner have the same graph. Then it looks about the same. It, they don't need to be identical, they just need to look about the same. Okay. Then find them, fill in the blank spaces. I got three blank spaces. I want you to fill it in. Please. And W in this picture happens to be the width. Well, you'll find it for width because that's what x is, and then you have to go and locate your x. You found x already. You have to find it. It's a menu to put it in. Alright guys, let's talk about what you see on the calculator and what you don't see in the calculator. So your calculator has a parabola, yes or no? Yes. You trace for it and it gave you this, yes or no? Yes. But remember, this is W based on our equation. W is the width, right guys? Yes. Okay, this one says the dimensions are, what did the calculator give you for the width? 400, okay? That is one of the sides. I'm gonna stop right there so you can ask questions. But dimensions mean I also need the length, right? Look at the picture. Isn't W the width? Yeah. So I'm gonna put in 400 yards there, but then how would I get the X value, the actual X value from the picture? Plug in where? 
What equation? What equation are we talking about? Multiple equations, right? Yeah. Technically, I can take 1600, plug in the values here, or isn't it already set up to find the length? Right there? Isn't x right here the length? Yeah. W is the width. We wrote an equation of the area in terms of the width. Okay? So once we have the answer from the calculator, this is actually the width. To get the the length, we need to put it back in here. It happens to be exactly the same on this question, okay? Not always so. Now, the calculator also gave you a y value. What y value did the calculator give you? 1,600, thank you. Now, manually, you could also calculate the same, right? 16,000, oh. okay. Oh. 160. Okay. Manually, though, can I take this times that to get 40, just like what? Yeah. So the largest area will be 160,000 yards, what? Square. Okay. I'm going to hold it here so you can ask questions. Is this okay? We'll try it again on the next one, okay? All right. Example three. A projectile is fired from a cliff of 500 feet above water at an inclination of 45 degrees to the horizontal with a muzzle velocity of 400 feet per second. In physics, it is established that the height, which is called h, of the projectile above water is given by. So they gave you the formula already. Second semester, we will come up, we will create the formula ourselves. Right now, we don't know anything about physics or calculus to create our own formula. So they gave you the formula. Height in terms of x is negative 32x squared divided by 400 squared plus x plus 500. The 500 at the end here is because we are starting out at how high above ground? 500. So in physics, we're adding that on, okay? Where x is, what, is, what does x represent? That's right, the horizontal distance, okay? Because we have a couple of dis uh, different distances here. You have the height, which is also distance, and then x is the horizontal. So when you are shooting something or throwing something, you have, go, it goes up, but also it also it does what? It yep. Okay. Part A. Find the maximum height of the projectile. What do we do? Graph it. Graph it. They gave you the equation. Now you graph it. Go to Y1. Put enter in the equation. If your calculator does not have fractions, make sure this has a, a bracket or a set of its own parentheses. So let me go help some students on their calculator. Graph it. If you can answer all questions, go ahead and graph me. So we are on the window, okay, so Anita and I are on the window by now. What should the x min be since x is the horizontal distance? What should x min be? Zero. 
Now, it doesn't have an X max for you, so this is one of the ones that we need to make the best educated guess. How far out do you think this object is going to go? How far out do you think this, X, this object is going to go? What number would you like to start with? You just have to go with one and then adjust from there. What do you want to go? A thousand. Sure, put in a thousand and zoom fit. Okay. You can adjust from there, but pick a number. Have a good educated guess. Not always that it's a match symmetry. So up to one. So the number would be if you say that it's X about and then And then zoom fit. Zoom fit is only good if you know your X min and X max. Notice how in this case we're getting a very small graph, then obviously you can go back and fix your X max and then zoom fit again to get a better picture. Okay? okay. All right. Can you just show me your calculator? Is it clapping? No. It works now? Oh, perfect. Question. Do you guys all have. Can you compare your, your calculator with a neighbor to make sure you guys all have similar shapes? So that's really what, I'm, what I want you guys to do is, hey, I can use a calculator. That's our goal today, OK? So on the calculator, we said x min is 0. Someone gave me your x max window. 6,000, thank you. Okay. Now, once you have that in, it's a parabola. It does not start at zero. It goes like that. Yes or no? Yeah. So this is your horizontal distance here. Horizontal distance. What's the y-axis, class? Y-axis, what do we label? Height. Height, you're right. So when you trace for this value right here, what did the calculator give you? What was that calculator? For the x. For the x, both. How about that? I'll take both. Okay. X is 2,500. 2,500, comma. Comma uh, 1,750. 1,750. Okay. Which one of those answers, oh, bless you, hon. Which one of those numbers are we using to answer part A? The y. The y. Okay. Maximum height is. Okay. Maximum height is, max height is, what's the unit of measurement? Feet, thank you. 1,750 feet. So you always have to understand what is what, what variable represents what. Part B, how far from the base of the cliff will the, proje will the projectile strike water? Am I interested in that 2,500? Yes. No. no. Um, on the test, I will ask for both, but just with, that's why I wrote both numbers on there. Okay. The question is, hey, can I write maximum height is this when the horizontal is this? Yes. Um, how far from the base of the cliff was the projectile strike water? What do you do there? Zero. Use your graph. Okay, go ahead and straight. So on the calculator, pick seconds out. Pick seconds. One minute. All right, give me this answer very quickly. How far out? Their object will strike water at? Object will strike 
water at five, four, wait, hold on, five, eight yards. Uh, since I didn't finish, feet, my bad. Since I did not finish the notes, we'll do uh, that homework due Thursday.